Good morning. Today we'll study about preservation of pharmaceutical products. Let's see about the introduction. So as far as preservation is concerned, we must know about the spoilage of pharmaceutical products. So generally pharmaceutical products, they spoil due to the growth of the microorganism or maybe due to the contamination with the microorganism. So in order to preserve these pharmaceutical products, we have to add antimicrobial chemical agent. So these antimicrobial chemical agents which are used to avoid or in order to avoid the growth of the microorganism so that the product can be preserved for longer duration, it is called as antimicrobial preservatives. Let's see what is the use of antimicrobial preservative agents. So these are generally used for preservation of pharmaceutical products to kill any contaminants remaining in non-sterile medicine and to further reduce the risk of the spoilage. Let's see what are the ideal properties of preservatives. So ideal preservative, it must able to kill all microorganisms or all microbial contaminants which are present in pharmaceutical products. Let's say if our preservative agent, if it can kill only bacteria, then it cannot be a ideal preservative because pharmaceutical product it may contain fungi, molds and also the bacteria. So ideal preservative agent should able to kill all such microbial contaminants. Second, it must be non-irritating and non-toxic in nature because pharmaceutical products are generally taken by human being. If the preservative itself produces irritation or if they are toxic in nature then obviously it will also affect the person who is taking that product. So it must be non-irritating and non-toxic. It must be stable and effective so that it can uh, it can able to preserve pharmaceutical product throughout the shelf life of that particular medicine. Next slide it is about the chemical preservative. So as far as preservation is concerned we are using different method of preservation like physical method by using the sterilization process or by using chemicals right so we are more focusing now on chemical preservative so these chemical preservatives are classified basically into four major groups depending upon their nature and also depending upon the structural components so they are classified as acidic preservative neutral preservative then mercurial preservatives and the, those preservatives which having the structure of quaternary ammonium compounds. Let's see what are the factors affecting concentration of preservative. So to preserve pharmaceutical product throughout its shelf life, we have to select appropriate concentration of preservative agent. So the selection of appropriate concentration of preservative required in the formulation is dependent to large extent on its ability to interact with the microorganism, then phase or type of formulation that is either water or lipid phase. For example, we are using high concentration of the sucrose uh, generally for the preservation of the syrup, right? Likewise, if uh, because the syrup contain water, right? Or it is the polar solvent. Next parameter which can decide the concentration of preservative, it is the container used for the formulation. For example, in case of plastic container, plastic containers can absorb preservative. Since it absorbs the preservative, it leads to decrease in quantity available for inhibiting the microorganism. So by considering this absorption of the preservative by plastic container, we have to increase the concentration of the preservative if pharmaceutical products it is packed in a plastic container. So these are the few representative examples of the preservative in different formulation like in case of injection we are using methylparaben at a concentration of 0.1 and phenol, cresol, benzyl alcohol and so on. Then eye drop we can use benzalconium chloride it is well known preservative for eye drop with a concentration of 0.01. Then in liquid mixture we can use the alcohol, bronopol, methylparaben, chloroform right. Likewise, in semi-solid, we can use the chlorocresol. So chlorocresol, it is good, common for both liquid as well as semi-solid pharmaceutical products. Let's see about development of preservative system. 
since we are a pharmacy so we are concerned with development of appropriate preservative system so when we develop preservative system so first important thing that we have to kept into our mind is the single preservative agent it is generally unrealistic because we have a combination of two or more preservative so if we are using the combination of two or more preservative the preservation become more effective it because it gives extended range and spectrum of the preservation for example in case of germal 115 so if we are using the germal 115 and uh, individually as a preservative means single preservative agent then it can only show antibacterial activity whereas when we are combining germal 115 with paraben this combination can having both antibacterial as well as antifungal activity so most of the time we have to identify appropriate or optimum uh, preservative combination for preservation of pharmaceutical products so an effectively designed preservative system it must retain antimicrobial activity for the shelf life of the product so this is the condition for selection of appropriate system that or it must able to retain their antimicrobial activity throughout the shelf life of that particular product another important part it is what are the different factors which affect preservative efficacy means how much preservative it is effective so it is depend upon different factors like interaction with formulation compound which are present in the formulation then what is the property of preservative it also decide the preservative efficacy then effect of the containers and type of microorganism and lastly the influence of ph let's see one by one first one it is interaction with the formulation compound so the the formulation contain different compound i have put here few representative example you can see hydrocolloids such as methyl cellulose or alginate tragacan in combination of the with the preservative it produces the interaction right and the interaction of this preservative with this different hydrochloride it lead to diminishing the activity of the preservative so if we are using this colloid with the preservative then preservative may not be that effective then emulsified oils along with the preservative it also reduces the efficiency of the preservative therefore the nature of the oil then oil water ratio type of emulsion it also influences the concentration of preservative so we have to consider all this parameter before selecting appropriate preservative agent next important uh, factor it is property of preservative so as far as possible we have to see that the preservative must be homogeneous and it possess more solubility in bulk phase for example if the bulk phase is oil in case of oil water emulsion then it must be more soluble in oil as compared to water likewise if it is water and oil emulsion that is wo type emulsion then in those cases since bulk phase is water so we have to use more amount of water soluble preservative agents another good example the chlorobutol you can see the chlorobutol it has got the pro- property which produces the problem that it it hydrolyze on the storage if the ph is unfavorable so we have to select the favorable ph in case of chlorobutol they may also react with the substance leached from the container so this is another problem so we have to select the appropriate preservative which should not uh, interact with the substance leached from the containers so because it may lead to a loss of its antimicrobial activity another important parameter which you know, decide the efficacy of preservative it is effect of containers for example in case of glass containers so glass containers are generally ideal because it retain the preservative content provided that the closure is air tight whereas in case of plastic container so we have already seen the example of the plastic containers so preservative generally penetrate or it may absorb into plastic containers and it interact so if this is the case so accordingly you have to select a preservative which have less interaction with plastic container then the rubber most of the time the rubber it also show interaction with the many of the preservatives screw cap containers and corks so it, it they, they are generally the common source of the mold spores so we have to select the preservative which can able to kill the mold spores in such pharmaceutical products which are stored in a container which have having screw cap con- as well as corks 
नेक्स्ट पैरामीटर इट इज टाइप ऑफ माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम सो जनरली द टाइप ऑफ माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम प्रेजेंट इन फार्मास्यूटिकल प्रोडक्ट इट इज डिपेंड अपॉन द सोर्स ऑफ द रॉ मटेरियल और इनग्रेडियंट फॉर एग्जाम्पल द सोर्स ऑफ रॉ मटेरियल और इनग्रेडियंट ऑफ द फार्मास्यूटिकल प्रोडक्ट इट इज द प्लांट प्रोडक्ट एंड डस्ट so if this is the case then it 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 having uh, more possibility of presence of soil microorganism for example clostridium species or bacillus anthracis and and it may cause spoilage of pharmaceutical product so if we are using the plant product and it does then we have to use the preservative which is effective generally against clostridium species and bacillus anthracis likewise animal product it contain pathogen like salmonella typhi so if pharmaceutical product the source it is animal then we have to add the preservative which can avoid or which can reduce the growth of salmonella typhi last parameter is influence of the ph so adjustments of the ph it generally affect the chemical stability and activity of preservatives so we have appropriate ph of the pharmaceutical product for example benzoic acid and we know that the benzoic acid having weak acid right it having the weak acidic nature since benzoic acid it is weak acidic in nature so we have to see that the ph of pharmaceutical product it must be maintained at acidic level so that it remains in undissociated form in acidic ph right so if we have we make the pharmaceutical product to our basic site what will happen to the benzoic acid the benzoic acid will undergo the process of dissociation or ionization which may reduce its antimicrobial activity likewise in case of cationic ph for example quaternary ammonium compound so since it these are quaternary ammonium compound so what can be the ph so since it contain ammonium so the nature it is generally they they have the basic ph so they are more effective at high ph value because high ph means at the basic level of the ph they remains in undissociated form so they they remains in their own original intact form so they preserve their antimicrobial activity so we have to see that in case of the acidic uh, the drug or acidic uh, preservative agent we have to adjust the ph of pharmaceutical product towards generally the weakly acidic range whereas in case of basic preservative like quaternary ammonium compound we have to adjust the ph of pharmaceutical product at generally the high ph or towards basic site last but very important part uh, 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 in case of preservation of pharmaceutical product it is evaluation of preservative efficacy so the preservative efficacy it is generally evaluated by using the test that test it is called as challenge test so what we are doing in case of challenge test we apply the final containers to determine whether it is adequately protected by the microorganism or not another thing we also applied it to demonstrate the effectiveness of antimicrobial preservatives added in multiple dose injectable as well as ophthalmic products so in this challenge test we are adding microorganism so obviously for the growth of microorganism we need the medium right so we are using the medium called as soybean casein digest agar medium so soybean casein digest agar medium it is ideal medium for preserve for testing of preservative efficacy another important parameter it is choice of test microorganism and inoculum preparation so whenever we select the microorganism for challenge test the intention is to select microorganism which are likely to arise in the raw material used in the product so we have to see the raw material which microorganism it may grow in the raw material so we have to use that microorganism for challenge test then we have to also see that it likely to occur in manufacturing environment right microorganism which are likely to occur in manufacturing environment then the microorganism which are likely to represent particular health hazard if they grew in the product so we have to consider all these thing and we have to select appropriate microorganism since preservative should be active against wide range of microorganism so whenever we conduct preservative efficacy test or challenge test we have to select microorganism with the broad nature like uh, both gram positive and gram negative bacteria then we can also select the yeast we can also select the molds and so on so we can select a microorganism like staphylococcus aureus pseudomonas aeruginosa 
E. coli and Candida albicans. Let's see about the procedure. So, before starting the challenge, starting with the challenge test, we have to first prepare the fresh stock culture of test microorganism depending upon the raw material. So, we will select first test microorganism. Next stage is subculturing of this test microorganism on surface of soybean casein digest agar medium. So, we will take that stock solution, we will add that in petri plate which containing soybean casein digest agar medium, right. After that, we will incubate this bacterial culture at appropriate temperature and period depending upon microbial species. Obviously, because every microbial species, they having their own favorable environment. So, for example, if you are using Aspergillus nigger, then we have to incubate at 20 to 25 degrees Celsius for 48 hours and for 7 days, right? Once it is done, then we will adjust the spore count to about 1 multiplied by 10 raised to 8 per ml with sterile saline solution. Now, we will take this microorganism in a test tube and by using and we will dilute it by using sterile saline solution, right? and we will also count the number of microorganisms present in per ml of that solution, right? So once counting is done and if it is come to the level of 1 multiplied by 10 raised to 8 per ml for aspergillus nickel, then that is called as standard microbial suspension, right? So first stage it is the fresh stock culture, from that we have made the subculture, then we have grown that microorganism in the, uh, that is soya bean casein digest agar media by incubating at 20 to 25 degrees celsius for 48 to 48 hours and 7 days and then we have made standard microbial suspension by putting that into the test tube and diluting it with sterile saline solution okay so now we have standard microbial suspension let's see what is to be done with this standard microbial suspension now what we'll do will inoculate this original product containers means from container we will take original pharmaceutical product because we want to test their uh, their <coughs> preservative efficacy right so now we will take that contained or we will take some amount of the product from that and then we will mix that with standardized microbial suspension okay so now we have taken the product from pharmaceutical containers that we want to test and we have mixed with the standard microbial suspension okay so when we are mixing, we have to follow the ratio of 0.1 ml inoculum suspension to 20 ml of the product and then we will mix it, okay. So 0.1 ml of inoculum suspension to 20 ml of the pharmaceutical product, then we will mix it, right. Once it is done, then we will incubate at 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, again in petri plate which containing soya bean agar casein medium, right. And then we'll after incubating for at different days, we'll determine number of viable microorganisms by plate count method at 7, 14, 21, and 28 days. Okay. So this is the entire procedure for challenge test. So now once we determine the plate count, we'll get the different number at on 7 days, 14 days, 21 days, and 28 days. So let's see how to interpret this result. Okay. So, preservative is considered to be effective if the concentration of viable bacteria. So, now we are talking about the bacteria. The concentration of viable bacteria is not more than 0.1% of initial concentration by 14 days. Likewise, if we are challenging with viable yeast and the mold, right, then the concentration of viable yeast and molds remain at or below the initial concentration during the first 14 days, okay. So the concentration of each test microorganism overall, it remains at or below their designated level during remainder of 28 days test period. If this is the case, then that preservative or that pharmaceutical products containing preservative is considered to be effective or it passes the challenge test. Okay. So this is all about the preservation of pharmaceutical product. Thank you very much.